emergency. Homicides in Chicago, Illinois, have surpassed the death toll of American Special Forces in Iraq. Hey, Dolomites! Welcome to Chirac! Chirac is the newest movie from director Spike Lee set in Chicago. It tells the story of gang violence in the city's south side. The movie opens here in the Bay Area on December 4th. And joining us live on set right now this morning is Nick Cannon, one of the stars of the movie. Nick, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, so this honest. movie hasn't even been released yet, and I feel like there's already this controversy yeah. surrounding it. The mayor of Chicago has come out on record saying he doesn't like the title. What is this film meant to do? Is it meant to compare a war zone to Chicago? I mean, uh, I think the film is meant to raise awareness. Spike's uh, initial call to action to me and to everyone who was involved with the film, he said, I just want to save lives. Uh, and I think by using your art to affect change, that's actually happening. But the term Chirac, it's not like Spike created that. Right. That was right. the, the inner city youth created that term. And it's true. I mean, there's more lives lost in the south side of Chicago than in the Iraq war. So mm -hmm. it's, it's unfortunate. But to be that town crier, the person to ring the bell to say, hey, there's an issue here. There's a problem here. And not just in Chicago, but in every you know, uh, disenfranchised inner city ar around America. Did, we're dealing with these same issues. Did you learn a lot about South Side of Chicago making this film? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, my character was just all about being authentic. Mm -hmm. So I went to the South Side of Chicago. I, and, you know, I remember I, I had the opportunity, uh, some gentlemen who were ex-gang members turned peacekeepers mm -hmm. were taking me around and sharing stories. And it was just, when you really, it's just the, it's a lot of pain in the community. And, uh, you know, and that's why I feel like there's no guidance or leadership. And I always say hurt people hurt people. Right. So uh, that's, that's really the, the, the sense of it. And I think that's why there's so much controversy around the title and the name and the, the story because people are crying out and, and they, want, they want change, but they don't know how to get it. Now, the movie is based on an ancient Greek play, Lysistrata, yeah. in, yeah. in which essentially the men are in all sorts of trouble. The women <laughs> say, we're going to do something we're gonna withhold sex from our men until they clean up their act. Yeah, over 2,000 years ago, Aristophanes created this theme. Uh, and I think it's really that juxtaposition of uh, love and war at the end of the day. And then it deals with a lot of uh, the male machismo and macho, like what's, what's more important to you? Right. And then when you get to the core of it, I mean, everybody wants to be loved. Mm -hmm. So that's we, we took those themes and put them in the modern day. When um, people leave a film, they wanna, they feel a certain way. Right. What do you think people are going to walk out of this film feeling like? Like, I need to do something, we need to do Definitely. something. What, what do you think they're uh, going to feel? I think it's going to, there's so many messages, especially in a Spike Lee joint. Right. You know, you're going <laughs> to you're gonna get quite a bit. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to say, you know, we, we want change. And uh, obviously, just the, the mindset of what's going on in the world today, I think people want to focus on humanity uh, and understand that a life is a life. And, and you know, every, we, we only get one. And that's shown so much throughout this film. And I think it resonates because it's so timely right now. The people who are involved in these violent acts in, in real life, whether it's in Chicago or other cities, do you think when they go see the movie and they walk out of here, it's actually going to change them and how they behave? I hope so. I mean, uh, this is a satire uh, to its core. And I believe, you know, it's, it's entertaining. But the message is so powerful that if, if you can grasp just a little bit, I mean, my character is actually the character that is the most stubborn and the most bullheaded throughout the entire process. And if you watch his journey, at least, and can connect with that, I think it can affect the, the, the people who are actually... Preparing, preparing for your role, you talk about your role. Uh, yeah. How did you prepare for it? Did you spend a lot of time on the streets there? I did. In, in the I mean, Southside? I remember going uh, and arriving in Chicago and... You know, the, the peacekeepers came and said, you know, forget this hotel, you're coming to the hood. <laughs> yeah. And wow. that's the, the entire process, in, in hearing these stories and connecting and, and you know, sharing uh, the, the, the mindset of, of people who have been affected negatively. I mean, they, a lot of it is uh, negative in a sense, but, you know, people who are on both sides of the fence to where people have lost loved ones. And, but then at the same time, to understand why these people do what they do and how they click. And you grew up here in California, and yes. in, a, in a tough part of San Diego, Lincoln Park, yeah. you credit basketball for saving you from that life that you're now putting on the big screen. How important <laughs> is sports, music, parents' uh, love at a very early age? Oh, uh, the arts, athletics, all of those things are, are quite important, uh, especially when you come up in an unorthodox uh, or low-income environment to where you need something. You, need, you just want to know someone else cares, so whether it's a teacher, a coach, a family member, 
um, for me, it, not only was it sports, but it was more entertainment more than anything. I mean, I, I could have went in a bunch of different paths, but luckily I had the opportunity to say, hey, I have a dream, I have a goal. Do you have friends who, who took the other path? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and, and it's, it's interesting for whether, you know, the people who are no longer with us or the people who, you know, are incarcerated, it's, it's really, it's that lack of hope. Yeah. That if if they had a, a ounce of hope or a possibility or a, a way to actually follow their dream, they might have went in a different direction. Music or acting, if you had to pick. Oh, they're so talented at everything. That's definitely a tough one, yeah, right? That's acting. A you know why I say acting? Why? Because even that I did this film, I still got to do music. Right, your yeah, music videos <laughs> came out. That's so. right. That's right. Well, Nick Cannon, what an honor! Thank, Thank you so much you. for Thank joining us on the Nine. Chirac opens here in the Bay Area, December fourth. Nick Cannon live on the Nine this morning. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Thank we'll be right impeccably back. Impeccably dressed. Thank I you, know, thank you, I appreciate you. that. So sharp. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Such a pleasure. No, such a pleasure here.